Here we are with Blaise De Silva, VP of Media and Entertainment with Keurig, Dr. Pepper. That was an incredible presentation and panel that you had up there. I think we're all blown away with what you're doing with TSM and some of these amazing activations. Thank you. What's top of mind for you when you think of esports uh, in this event? Well, for us, um, you know, this is our first year that we've been uh, in esports with our TSM sponsorship. And for what's top of mind for us is what do we do next year and how do we continue to build uh, our relationship with this community and how do we, you know, continue to grow and, and what are the different things that we want to, you know, do as part of our program for next year. So we're in the middle of planning right now where we're trying to figure out, you know, how do we grow our sponsorship with TSM. Obviously, you know, Fortnite was not part of our conversation last year because it wasn't on the radar and now all of a sudden how big Fortnite is, how do we take advantage of what TSM is doing in that space and build that out in addition to what we're doing obviously with the League of Legends team. So again, exciting space, there's always um, uh, something going on and you're just trying to figure out how I can take advantage of it and, and, and work our brand into that space. Probably one of the things I can, uh, the viewers would appreciate hearing from you, Blaze, is to that point that you were planning last year and you didn't see the Fortnite thing coming, how do you move quickly as a, such a large brand with such a big part of an organization and be nimble to take advantage of some of this new relevance with opportunities like Fortnite? You know? Well, one of the nice things for us about sponsoring a team is you get kind of everything that is associated with that team. And so, you know, TSM will have its League of Legends team, which has been kind of the driving force of, of, of TSM, but they've got players playing on other teams. And so as Fortnite quickly grew in popularity, TSM was able to pivot and be flexible and add, you know, Myth and Daquan and Hamlins and build out the Fortnite house. So they were being flexible and nimble and doing what they were doing. And then we kind of tried to figure out what could we do in that space. It's a little different than, say, League of Legends because, you know, there isn't the competitions going on on a weekly basis like there was uh, or like there is for League of Legends. It's more about these streamers and how do we take advantage of them. And so some of the examples that I, I shared, you know, we did some custom bottles for the Fortnite team. We gave it to them. They shared it out. You know, that was just one simple example of how we tried to take advantage of it and, 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 and be relevant in that space. But that's what we're trying to figure out for next year is, Fortnite is so popular, what do we do now in that space and build on to our overall TSM deal? So the flexibility of working with the team allowed us to do a few things this year. Now we're trying to be more thoughtful and structured and figuring out, okay, how can we take advantage of it um, uh, on a continuous basis for the entire year and build out some ideas that uh, will be there more on a consistent basis. Absolutely. I think I'd appreciate some sense of scale for you. What's, what do you think of? So VP of Media and Entertainment, there's a lot that rolls up to you. Tell us about that. You know. So my role is I over, oversee the entire media budget for Keurig Dr. Pepper. So um, that's all of the media for brands like Dr. Pepper, Snapple, 7-Up, Canada Dry Ginger Ale, um, now adding the, the, the Keurig brands as well um, as part of their acquisition of, of Dr. Pepper Snapple Group. So again, overseeing all of the media planning and media buying, working with our media agency uh, initiative uh, out of New York and putting together all the brand plans um, for, uh, for those brands. And so, you know, part of building out those plans as we went into 2018 was how do we take advantage of esports um, and, and build that as part of our plan. So it's kind of unique in the sense that while I oversee the media uh, budgets for, for these brands, the deal with TSM was half sponsorship, kind of half media, yeah. um, but we funded it out of the media budget and so it kind of rolled up into my group and that, you know, we were the ones kind of pushing that as a way to deliver advertising or deliver messaging to this you know, younger consumer group who may not be as exposed to some of the things that we're doing um, with our mainline work. Do you think that's the norm in the spaces that you're gonna see more companies and agencies having to drive opportunity through media versus like creative or experiential, or is that unique to you? Um, I think it's a combination. I, think, I don't think there's any one way in. I think there's a number of ways in, and frankly, it's doing many things that I think collectively have impact. So while we're doing things from a media standpoint and we're doing things from a sponsorship standpoint and we're doing things from building out creative that's relevant to the space, you know, we've done a little bit of events as well. We did something around E3 um, with, with GameSpot and sponsoring one of the events they had out at E3. Um, we're doing another thing through uh, Double Tap, an event that they're holding. So we're trying to tackle it from a lot of different angles because I don't think there's any one 
way that you can just go in and, 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 and reach this audience. You've got to do it in a number of different ways. So we're very mindful of that, and that's how we think about building out our plans. And again, that's kind of what we're thinking about for 2019 is, okay, as we've seen the success of what we've done this year, what's next and how do we con how do we kind of build out that circle in reaching more people in this space and that's that's kind of what we think about that's amazing i can think blaze i i just feel like because you're head of media that you're definitely very data driven and you want to evaluate opportunities and where you put your dollars and say it has to make sense metric wise um and when i was talking to brad before about tsm's footprint with their media angle to their business seems like it makes a lot of sense did that make it a little bit easier with their websites and that full portfolio of an offering that they had for you to work with them? Yeah. Originally, the data that we were using more was just around the scale of TSM as a team and, and the competitions that they were playing in and looking at that audience. We weren't actually as focused on the media site side mm. um, as we are going to be for, for 2019, but there was a lot of data that helped support why we should get into esports and then particularly why we wanted to be partnering with TSM, not only from their competitive success and winning championships, but also the type of audience that they were bringing to the table and who we could reach through all of their, their, their social channels. Um, so that was kind of the, the data uh, that we utilized to, to take this introductory step. And then as we've been looking at what to do in 2019, that's when we're kind of looking at some of the, the, the data in and around you know, their websites. Some of the other data that we've been using as we go into 2019 is, you know, we're using Gum Gum, Gum to help measure mm -hmm. all of the exposure that we're getting across the ecosystem, so we can understand what's the value um, that we're that we're seeing in terms of what we're spending in this space and what we're getting in return. So certainly, there's measures in place. We want to be mindful of of our spend and making sure that we're getting the value out of it, and then also using other the, other types of data that help support why we should be in this space. What are the major metrics or top three things for you? Is it brand awareness? Is it to drive sales at first cut? Is it planning your seed? What's the thoughts there sure. strategically? You know, first and foremost, um, you know, we always want to try to drive sales. I'm not going to tell you that it's an easy way to just measure exactly what we're doing in this space and, 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 and then correlate it to a sale. So we're doing a number of different things. So one is, like I said, just the media valuation through Gum Gum of what is the exposure yeah. that, we, that we're receiving and what's the value of that. So that's just one. Two is we're looking at um, other research studies we're doing in and around, you know, brand affinity, brand awareness, brand consideration of the, you know, esports fan and as they've been exposed to our messaging, is it resonating with them? Are we seeing some movement on some of those brand health metrics? And then third, we are still um, measuring it as part of our market mix modeling. So we do market mix modeling for all of our marketing spend, um, not just media, but all, all things in mm -hmm. marketing. And so we're putting our esports spend through our market mix modeling and we're going to get those results back uh, later this year. And we're going to see how it stacks up with some of the other channels that we, that, that we utilize as well. So we're trying to do all the right things in terms of measurement to see if we can get a positive read on, on this space and, and continue to you know, invest and grow in it. Um, it's not easy. Um, it's not as simple as maybe some of the other things that we do, but we at least are trying to apply, apply the standards that we do with anything that we do in marketing. We're, we're trying to uh, uh, apply it to the esports space. But one of the things that I will tell you with all the work that we've done so far this year is at least looking at social sentiment and the positive or negative responses to what it is that we've been doing in the space, it's been overwhelmingly positive by the consumer. And certainly that is also important for us to make sure that we're not alienating anybody as we come into this space. Absolutely. So for executives and CMOs that are watching this space, even agency heads that control media budgets for big brands, what is it that pushed you over the hump? That Was there a moment, an event that you attended that said, you know what, esports, I want to do this. Was there anything that stood out or was it kind of a slow burn that you paid attention over time? Yeah, I, I wouldn't say there was any one thing. It was more, you know, there's been so much written about esports and the popularity of esports. And, you know, if you're in this business, you can't but help follow along and see what is going on in this space and as you start to see more and more um, uh, sports teams and mainstream media companies invest in this space you can see that obviously this is going to be uh, you know another pillar in the you know entertainment and, and sports and, and culture communities and so that was sort of like you said a slow burn of hey there's just a lot going on and then when we look at what we're doing in our mainline media plan and obviously we have a, a significant commitment to college football which is great and fantastic and does has done uh, delivered amazing results for our brand we also recognize that 
you know, that may not be reaching that younger consumer uh, uh, as much or in ways that we want to reach them as maybe we need to be in, in some things that are really specific to that consumer. And so it was kind of a combination of things of understanding what's going on with our consumers, what's being becoming popular, understanding what our traditional media is delivering and where it may not be delivering. And it was kind of like, hey, we need to be back in this space. We were in it, like I said, you know, eight to ten years ago with some of the work we did with MLG and with EA. It was, again, the right time to come back and, and, and revisit it. So um, it was just constantly thinking about it and, and, and understanding the space and, 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 you know, working, understanding the landscape because, you know, which way do you come in? Do you come in with a team? Do you come in with a league? Do you come in with an event? Understanding the landscape and figuring out what's the right way to come in. And then for us, fortunately, an opportunity became available with TSM because they had been previously sponsored by another beverage company who dropped them. And so there was an opportunity to come in and get the best team and you know the, my attitude is is uh, if I'm going to come into the space I want to I want to be with the best and I want to be where people um, already are and are already excited about what somebody else is doing and so for us to be able to partner with a you know a, a, a iconic team like TSM you know kind of a the stars aligned at the right time for us to then make that jump. Absolutely. As a company that's getting back to the space that was once there did you feel a sense of urgency? Is there a, a FOMA component to a brand or decision maker potentially missing out of not being in early in esports that they need to work on? It wasn't about? so much of like this fear of missing out as much as, as you think about how we plan our, put together our plans. It's on an annual basis. And if you don't do it now, you're another year away from doing it. Yeah. It's not like you're going to say, hey, next quarter, hey, let's come up with a couple million bucks or whatever the number is and get into esports and do some media and do a sponsorship. Like You have to make it as part of your thoughtful planning process. And so you kind of have that you know, one shot every year to get something into the plan. And if you don't do it, then you've got to wait a whole nother year. So it wasn't so much as a fear of missing out. It's just you can see what's happening and it, it just makes sense for us. And so it wasn't, I mean, if we didn't do it last year, then I guess we would have had to wait another year and we could have gotten in and, and, and we still, you know, could have gotten in and done, do all the right things. But it just was that it was the right time. And like I said, I think TSM becoming available also made it uh, uh, such a great time to come in because, like I said, we don't want to build from scratch. We didn't want to, you know, we didn't want to start our own team. We didn't want to start our own league or, or create something that maybe wasn't as relevant to this consumer. We want to be around, you know, things that they're already uh, excited about and passionate about. And how do we then um, work with that? that entity, in this case a team, how do we work with them and deliver the right advertising and the right uh, uh, integrations that make sense. Absolutely. With your wide portfolio of brands that you support and cover and work with, is there a conflict that it has to be specific to Dr. Pepper now supporting TSM? Or do, would we see a widespread um, engagement through a few a variety of brands? I think um, for right now it is Dr. Pepper. I mean, that's the brand that, um, uh, you know, targets that more younger consumer that, that, that makes up um, uh, a large portion of the esports audience. As you broaden out to gaming, so you get out of that competitive esports space and maybe broaden out to gaming and culture, there may be opportunity down the road to tap into the space, but that may not be necessarily with a TSM team mm -hmm. element. It may just be other things in the ecosystem that might make sense for, for another brand, um, but it may not be the team sponsorship. So um, we'll see. We'll, we'll, you know, we'll see how our, care, our success continues um, with what we're, is we're doing and as we look at our other brands uh, in the portfolio. And certainly now that we have um, uh, Keurig brands that have come in, I don't know if it makes sense for them, don't know those brands yet, but we're going to learn about those brands. Is there opportunity there? Um, and we'll figure out, you know, what in the esports or, or gaming ecosystem makes sense for any of our brands. Absolutely, Blaze. Thanks so much for your time. If we can just get a going away message for you, for the agencies and CMOs out there that would love to hear from you, uh, a little moment of advice, you know? Uh, my, my advice is, uh, you know, don't be afraid to jump in. Um, you know, a lot of people talk about, you know, crawl, uh, crawl, walk, run. I don't even think we crawled. I think we actually started at a walk or a very fast walk and have just continued to you know, grow from there and, and again, being flexible and adaptable um, in, in the middle of the year and making changes as you see things, you know, either resonating um, with consumers or um, you see the ecosystem changing and, and, and making adaptations to what your plans might be is also extremely important. 
but uh, you have to be, you know, you have to, you have to build out things that are absolutely um, relevant to the space. This is not about taking your mainline messaging and just dropping it into this space.